Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And in today's video, I'll be playing Wukong in the jungle. And let me tell you right now, Wukong is actually quite powerful in the jungle. Like, definitely one of the best team fighting champions. However, he does, you know, he has a lot of strengths, but he also has a lot of weaknesses. So I'll show you guys how to play Wukong in the gameplay part of the video. But first, we're gonna talk about the build. If you just wanna skip to the gameplay, there's timestamps in the description. So, um, with Wukong, honestly, there is really only one build I go for. I know that there is more builds. Let me first tell you about, like, a different build from this one. Basically, the same, but you slap a Yumo's Ghost Bit as your first item. So, I just don't like the Yumo's Ghost Bit on Wukong. Because, basically, you're delaying your tankiness, but you're going for a more damage-heavy route. I don't really like it, especially because like this item gives you the 25% attack speed for 4 seconds after you engage. But the thing with Wukong is, he doesn't always utilize attack speed. You know, when you're using your ultimate, you're like not doing basic attacks, right? So I just, I don't know, I, I, I don't really like this item on Wukong. Because you really want to be super tanky for your team. So starting off with the Black Cleaver, even though it's not going to deal as much damage, it's still going to deal a lot, because it also gives you 40 attack damage like the Yumo's Ghost Blade, it gives you more ability haste and it gives you 350 bonus max health. On top of that, it gives you, it also gives you movement speed, you know, when you're fighting and it shreds the enemy armor. So you're acting more as a support jungle, uh, jungle carry than just like a full carry, right? So, you know, Black Cleaver already gives Wukong a lot that he needs because it's super easy to stack up the Black Cleaver on Wukong as well. That's why I, like, I, I've seen it work, you know, the Yumo's goes with, I've seen it work, but I feel like it's a waste because Black Cleaver is literally the perfect item for Wukong. So for your second item, you want to get boots. And generally I go for these boots, the armor boots, but you can also go for the Mercury Sweats. Armor boots are good if you want to tank against attack damage. It's especially good on Vulcan because he has his second ability as well. You know, you can kind of escape some sort, some CC. Like if a Sana throws her second ability at you, for example, you can escape it with your second ability, right? Something like that. So that's why, you know, you don't always need the Mercury Sweats. Plated Steel Cups are actually generally going to be the best choice for you. So, for your second item, you go for the Sunfire Aegis. This item is incredibly powerful early on in the game, and it skills very well because you build more items that have HP. So, you know, get the Sunfire Aegis as your second item, and you're gonna deal, you're gonna deal a lot of burn damage at the enemies. Um, <clears throat> and then the other passive is, at max emulate stacks, because, you know, it stacks up, deals more and more damage. At that, your basic attacks will burn the enemies around you for damage, for the damage of this stack as well. And, it's really powerful, like especially on Wukong because you can tank up for so long. So, um, for your for your enchantment, you want to get, where is it? The Stone Plate. And um, Stone Plate is just amazing on Wukong. Let me tell you why. Because his first ability heals, heals him up for 10% of his max HP. So when you use the Stone Plate, your first ability is going to heal you up even more. So Stone Plate is just absolutely amazing on Wukong. You really want to get a lot of HP and the stone plate on Wukong. Now for your third item, even though Guardian Angel doesn't give HP, it's literally the perfect item for Wukong, because at this point, you're already gonna be incredibly tanky with these two items and the stone plate, so getting a Guardian Angel, like, if the enemy finally manages to kill you, you still have the Guardian Angel, like, you know, it's just such a toxic item to get on Wukong, and that's what makes it so good. And then as your fourth item, you generally wanna get Starrux Gauge, Unless you need a force of nature, you know, unless the enemy has a lot of magic damage and you're kind of forced to go for the force of nature. Otherwise, as I said, you go for the Star Gauge. And then as your last item, it depends. Like, do you need magic resist? Boom, you slap in the force of nature and you get a force of nature. Otherwise, you can get a Randuin's Omen, a Thormill, a, a Frozen Heart, you know, Dead Man's Plate, whatever you need. By the way, uh, for the Thormill, you can actually get this Bramblefest component quite early on in the game. Like, you can even get Bramblefest as your second item if the enemy has a lot of healing, like a Nami or a Soraka, you know, if they have a lot of healing, you could get a Bramblefest as like your second item or maybe third item. But then you delay the Thormill up until your very last item. That's kind of how it works. So, for the runes, you go for a Conqueror. It's, uh, it's like super easy to stack up the Conqueror. I mean, you could go for Electrocute if you go for Yumo's Ghost Blade and Dust Blade of Draktar. Yeah, like, okay, let me show you. Let me actually quickly show you, like, like a, like a sick build on him. 
So it is built. I have it right. I actually have it. I have it. That's funny. This is the other build that I was actually talking about. So you can build a dusk, uh, you must ghost plate as your first item and then go for the black cleaver. But you can also like go absolute giga chat Vulcan and go for this build. You know, you must ghost blade, dust plate of Draktar, black cleaver, Cerulean's grudge, guardian angel, just boom, 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 boom. And you're also going to boom on them with the proto belt, you know, and here it says, pro it says conquer, but you could actually slap an electrocute here to do an insane amount of burst damage but the thing is conquer is a broken rune so you, i guess you still go for conquer um champion you only go for in lane if you go for this build otherwise you just go for brutal because you always need brutal which uh, this is basically the, the the giga chat build i should rename this build actually uh let me just do that real quick giga chat giga chat build yeah it needs the appropriate name. So let's go to the normal build. Um, for the runes, this is Jungle Wukong, Conqueror, second rune, Brutal, because you always go Brutal in the jungle. Third rune, generally Hunter Titan, because um, you don't really want to have Mercury threats. Even though it's I have it in this build, you don't really want to have it. It's like, a, I never go for them. It's just, I don't know why they're here, to be honest. So, you know, Hunter Titan, if the enemy has some sort of CC, that's going to annoy you. Otherwise, you can actually go for Conditioning. Now, if you can get away with getting conditioning, then you're gonna be absolutely unkillable in the late game. It's gonna give you so much armor and magic resistance in the late game. Like on top of all your items, conditioning is gonna make you insanely tanky. But you know, so basically either conditioning or Hunter Titan. For the fourth one, I really like Mastermind to take dragons and turrets faster, but you could also go for uh, Pathfinder if you wanna be rotating around a little faster. So for the spells, you go for Smite and Flash. So enough about the build, let's now get into the gameplay. All right, on to the gameplay. By the way, from tomorrow, I'm going to start doing giveaways again. You know, not today yet, but from tomorrow, I'm going to start giving away 15 skins every month again. You know, because a lot of people wanted, wanted them back and I could spare the money for it. You know, so why the hell not? So tomorrow, which is going to be the 1st of December, the new giveaway is going to start, guys. I I'm glad that I'm bringing it back, really. Give me a second. I'm really thirsty. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, so Vukong got a change since I think since I made a video about him. So that change, most of you should know, um, is a change to his first ability. So basically, they reduced Vukong's damage, but they increased his tanking potential. And what I mean with that, <laughs> what is this Hell's Europe version? There is only one Hell's. It's the Europe version, bro. Well, I mean, my parents are the 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 the. It's West Asian version. I'm the European version, right? I was born in Europe. But okay, let's talk about the video. Um, so, you know, Wukong used to be insanely good with Yumo's Ghost Blade, but now not that much anymore, because his first ability heals him up and it skills with his max HP. You know, the more HP you have, the more you're gonna heal up. I'm actually invading the Shivana here. Let's take a look at what's gonna happen, because this is a very interesting rotation that I'm doing. Shivana is incredibly weak in the early game. I'm taking advantage of that. Of course I am, like, I can just demolish the Sivana. So let's take a look at how this is gonna go. Ooh, the Darius is coming. Did I see the Darius? No one is rotating. Why, am our team, why is my team not rotating, though? It's a little weird. No, I didn't get it. Ay, 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 I did not get it. I got the first blood, but I didn't get the... Ah, if I had smited that blue buff, we would have demolished them. That is so sad. The idea was good. You, know, you can actually do invades like that, especially against champions like a Shivana, because Shivana is incredibly weak. Um, but the way that I did it, like, let me tell you my mistake, basically. So when you do an invade like that, the first thing you need to do is look at mid lane and look at Baron, um, look at mid lane and look at bot lane, because and what you need to look for, by the way, does do these lanes have priority? What I mean with priority is. Are they winning their lane? Do they have the pressure? Have they pushed out the wave? If they have priority, it means that they can rotate to me very easily. Um, but I didn't even look. Like, I can't even tell you whether or not they had priority. So my mistake there was, um, I didn't actually look at the bot lane and the mid lane. That's why I also said my bad in the chat, because it was my bad. You know, even though the invade was good, I didn't look. I didn't look at the mid lane. I didn't look at the bot lane. So it didn't justify my invade. It doesn't really, because... 
you like you need to know what your teammates are up to you need to know okay can my Yasuo rotate yes or no can my Akali rotate yes or no and the answer for Akali was no because obviously the Darius did a rotation and he pushed out the wave and you know my Akali came in a little late that's not his fault that's my fault because I didn't see it so you know keep that in mind before doing rotations like that Shivana just ulted we can just disengage like he baited her perfectly basically I guess a Shivana um, throughout the mid game you really want to bait her ultimate out. You don't really want to fight Shivana with her ult. Basically, you want to pretend as if you're going to all in her, like the Yasuo did, right? Shivana used her ultimate because she was scared, and then we disengage. You know, as you saw, I didn't even bother engaging. I just left the Shivana, and very soon she's not going to have an ultimate, so then we can fight. You actually see me this game also. Uh, play differently around dragons because when you play against the shivana you have to value dragons more i always tell you guys that you know you can leave dragons it's okay you know um, um dragons are like overvalued but if you're against the um, if you're against the shivana dragons are not overvalued if she gets a lot of dragons she's gonna become incredibly uh, powerful like the buffs that dragons give her are insane so you need to be very careful with giving free dragons to shivana here I'm taking a risk by the way, Shivana could actually rush down the dragon. So I'm very quickly taking this farm and immediately I'm gonna rotate to the dragon to see whether or not she's taking it. Come on! She's not taking it. So here I can actually go for it. Um, I have a sweeper in 8 seconds, so I can make it very hard for the Shivana to, to steal it. And I believe Shivana doesn't have her ultimate. Yes, she doesn't because she used it earlier. So we can bait her in this fight to make her go here. And like we can fight her, we can potentially fight her as you can see I'm doing it, you know, using my ultimate right here, it's not going too well. Yeah, that didn't go too well, where was my team? Where was, yeah, exactly, wait, where was Yasuo? I want to rewatch that, one second. I just want to rewatch. Oh, Yasuo was coming from home. I think he died. Wait, no, what? Wait, 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 just give me a second, guys, let me just... Oh my god, he backported! That is why we lost the fight! My Yasuo backported! I thought he had died! He backported! No! Why did he backport? Oh my god! If he was here, he would have gotten a knockup and we would have killed all of them! He backported to get items, but we could have just rushed the dragon here, because Shivana had no ultimate. So, Yasuo made a huge mistake. So let me tell you what Yasuo's mistake was here. Um, you have to understand that if... Um, um, so when you're against a Shivana, and Shivana doesn't have her ultimate, even if you can buy an item at home, you don't want to. You want to force a fight. Because Shivana with no ultimate is useless. That's what I knew in this game, and when I started the dragon, I actually checked out and I saw teammates around me, right? Like, I saw the Yasuo, I saw, the ev I saw everyone around me, so I was like, hey, let's take the free dragon. But then Yasuo just backboarded. Damn! So my call was actually right, like, that was definitely the right call to make to go for the dragon there, because Shivana had no ultimate. Here, yet again, she has no ultimate. Like, look at this, I'm, we should kill her now, we should just focus her. Oh god. Yeah, there it is. Easy dragon. See, as you can see, I'm playing around the dragon. I'm really baiting the Shivana into going into the dragon. Because when you're against Shivana players, they really want that dragon, right? Because the dragon gives them a lot of buffs. So you can use the dragon as a bait. Especially when Shivana doesn't have her ult. That's when you want to do the dragon. You know, you're, because they're very likely going to fight you. Because Shivana wants dragons. Which is going to give you a, ma it's gonna give you a massive advantage. Here I'm leaving my scuttle crap, of course, to help my teammate out. Not quite enough. I have ult, but I don't think my ult would have killed him, to be honest. Is this a Darius? <clears throat> now with the Akali, we can actually dive him, potentially. Let's take a look. I'm telling him that I want to dive. Darius actually goes back. So what do we do? Instead, we take the first third. Also fine, right? Like, I, e I was either going to kill the Darius, or I take the first third. Darius actually still shows up. So I go for the kill as well. Can I kill him, though? I don't have energy. Yeah, I go for the full kill. I really wanted this kill because my Akali was actually struggling a little bit in the lane. So I wanted to give her the opportunity to actually make a comeback in the lane. So I took a turret for her and we got the kill on Darius. Even though it cost me my summoner spell and my ult, it's definitely worth it. And I'm not invading here because, you know, uh, I don't really have any summoner spell. I don't have my ultimate. I don't have mana. So I'm just taking the scuttle crap and going back. 
By the way, the enemy Akshan is getting very fat, and you should pay attention to that when you play the game. And you have to understand which enemies are going to be a problem. So obviously the Akshan is going to be a problem. So I need to find a way to gank this, uh, to gank this Akshan. By the way, they have a Soraka. I should get anti heal ASAP. ASAP, like super fast. I need to get it as fast as possible. I'm not quite sure why I didn't get it as my second item already. I really need that Bramble fast. <clears throat> but yes, I told my team. I told my Kaisa to get anti heal. The reason that I especially told Kaisa to get anti heal is because um, uh, um, she's in the matchup against the, against the Soraka, right? Her and Thresh are against the Soraka. So in their matchup, if Kaisa has anti-healing, she's gonna, you know, she's gonna reduce the healing from Soraka by a lot in their two versus two matchup, which is gonna give them a massive advantage. So she really needs to get it, and then I also need to get it soon. If Kaisa doesn't get anti-heal, I'm just gonna get it myself. But if she does, I'm gonna delay it a little bit. That was my thought process this game, by the way. Now I remember. This Kaisa's crazy. Look at that. Oh, or I mean the Akali. Oh my god. Look at him. I guess it paid off ganking him, right? Remember? Remember? I ganked his lane, we got a turret, we got a kill on the Darius, and now he's popping off, right? He's popping off. So it's really good, you know? As a jungler, your role is to make your team pop off, right? Like, of course, you can pop off as well. But as you can see, clearly that, that dragon play that I did, you know, to force the Shivana to go for the dragon, even though she had no ultimate, uh, the gank that I did on the Akali, the timing was amazing, the invade that I did in the early game was good, but I didn't look around, and that's what made it bad, right? Like, as a jungler, you do these things. Am I gonna ult her? I think I wanted to, but I got silenced by the Soraka, unfortunately. I'm not engaging into this, because Darius has his stacks. So I'm not I'm not gonna mess around with the Darius that has the stacks. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess around with that. Now I am, because he doesn't have his stacks anymore. Ooh, look at the Soraka heal, though. Like, what are we... It's really hard to fight this, as you can see. Oh my god. Ah. ah. He got his Blade of the Rune King on me. That's unfortunate. He got his Blade of the Rune King stacks on me. How the hell did that happen? Oh, from the Akshan. He got the Blade of the Rune King on me. I need to get, like, in a game like this, you really need to get anti-healing. I don't know when I'm gonna get it in this game. But if I look at, if I look back at it right now, I really need to get it fast. I'm paying my team to go for Dragon. Because Shivana used her ultimate, guys. It's the same thing. Like, you can clearly see it's the same thought process that you have against the Shivana. After she uses her ultimate, you go for a dragon. Because she's going to be at a severe disadvantage. Severe, severe disadvantage. So let's take a look at this. I take the portal from the Thresh and I secure the dragon. She was not even on time, as you can see. Oh, she did actually have her ult. Wow. That's fast as hell. How the hell did she get it? But that was just really good. Um, I actually remember here we went for the dragon because I respawned faster than the Shivana. That's why we went for the dragon here. Yeah, I remember. So I took a I took a look at when the Shivana was gonna respawn and when I was gonna respawn, and I saw that I respawned a little earlier, and I was actually in voice with the Thresh. Thresh told me I'm gonna throw a lantern to you, so I'm gonna be a few I'm gonna be like a few seconds earlier than the Shivana, which allows me to smite down the dragon before she even reaches. That was actually my thought process here. I remember now when I was playing the game Duo Q with my Thresh. Um, I told my team to go for the dragon because I timed it perfectly with the death timer. So that's another thing that you have to pay attention to as a jungler. Look at the death timer. So for example, if you if you and the enemy jungler are dead, but your timer is 10 seconds shorter than the enemy jungler, you can actually tell your team to go for the dragon and then you're going to be there faster than the enemy jungler to smite it down. Another thing to note is... Um, if your death timers are similar, you can actually also be there at the dragon. What do you do? You sell your enchantment and you buy teleport boots. You, you literally sell your enchantment and you buy teleport boots and you're going to be first at the dragon or the baron. These are, these are pretty advanced tactics, but you know, they can actually make or break a game, really. Like if you do the teleport and are faster at the dragon, smite it down, it's a free dragon for your team, right? There's a Shivana. He has his ultimate, which he is obviously gonna use. Wow, we didn't even give Shivana the time to use her ult. That's amazing. Look, she's already dead. Beautiful engage. Like, I immediately knocked her up because I just didn't even want to give her time to use her ultimate there. And Yasuo followed up perfectly by, you know, using his ult as well. Like, we're, we're just playing this game incredibly well, to be honest. Like, we did, we did a few screw up. We screwed up a few times. 
And this is a really good Herald, by the way. I just got the Herald, but we killed four of the enemies. Ari is in the top lane. My team is pushing mid lane. This is quite literally the perfect moment to use the Rift Herald. Like, I can even... Can I even make it shoot on the, on the bot lane? No, I can't. It already died. Wow. Because we had no minions. But that's still fine. You know, I got the Rift Herald. I pushed another turret, which is really, really nice, of course. <clears throat> yeah, I got the anti-heal by the way. As you can see, I did get the Bramble Fast quite early on. Here I cancelled my teleport because, you know, I didn't... I was like, are they gonna full engage on the Yasuo? Yes or no? But then they didn't, so I went back. Oh, come. I could have backported. I have the Mountain Dragon. Why did I stop my backport? Ah, I could have just backported because I had a Mountain Dragon. That's stupid. The Baron is gonna spawn, by the way. There it is. And as you can see, I'm not going for the Thormil. Because as I said, like Thormil is just not really worth of an item. Unless you're going for it as your last item, really. It's just not that good. Unless you've stacked up a buttload of armor. Then it is going to be worth. But not with a lot of armor? Meh. Nah. You, you can just get the Bramble Fest for the anti-heal, right? Like, you don't need to spend all that gold for the Thormil. It's just way too expensive. My team is fighting without me, which is not the best thing, of course. You don't want to see a team fighting without you. I'm not even looking at, at what's happening, which is a little weird. Perhaps I just didn't really care. I was just farming and they're making... Like, they're obviously making a mistake by engaging without me. So, like, I didn't even care, to be honest. Like, you can clearly see I didn't even care. They made the mistake. And, yeah, the dragon is spawning soon, though, so we do have to be a little careful. Ooh, that's some nice vision to pop. Boom. Boom. There it is. Now we have full advantage of the, uh, of the blue side jungle as well. <laughs> I was just baiting. Dragon is spawning. We shouldn't fight though. Ah. I use my gargoyle. Oh my god, that was a good ultimate though. Oh baby, that was good. No, oh, the minion body block. I made the jungle body block it for me. As you can see, I flashed behind the big fat brown guy. We actually killed all of them four versus five, and now we win the game. What an amazing game, guys. What an amazing Vulcan game this was. I really did my job in this game, to be honest. That was really, really well played. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let's take a look at how much damage I did and how much I tanked. Um, one second, let me send a message to a friend of mine. <clears throat> I sent a message to the Thresh of this game to play, but, uh, if, in case you were asking. Finishing video. <laughs> I didn't do a lot of damage, but I tanked up a lot of damage. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, make sure you give the video a like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.